What's digging? Hey, I've got a um, iPhone 7 here that's got the awesome audio IC issue. So I thought I'd do a video on showing you guys the full repair. Um, a quick way to check if there's two things that can, a few things that can go down. You can have a problem with the microphone, where the actual microphone at the bottom here um, that's on the charger dock is the issue. If that's the issue, when you go into voice memos here, if you try and hit record, it should work. When it doesn't work like it is now, that's um, that's definitely an audio IC issue. So when we talk about audio IC, what we're actually talking about is, I'll just pull up my circuit diagram here. And after all that, I realized that I didn't even have my mic input here. So what I'm actually doing is pulling up ZXW to show you guys the audio IC. Um, essentially, it's just this chip here. What happens is that resistor is meant to connect to that pad that's on um, the audio IC, and that gets a signal from the CPU there, which it just zoomed out on. Um, that AP line is just action potential to codec, being uh, audio codec, so that's uh, just jargon, schematic talk for the actual audio IC. So it comes across the CPU um, to that resistor, and then from the resistor underneath that pad. And what actually happens is that pad and that resistor um, lose continuity. So what we actually have to do is lift up the chip and join those bits with um, a jumper. So we just put a th wire pretty much to connect that again because it's just a fault. It's just happened. I didn't realize that wasn't on me then. You guys just staring at a schematic while I talk. So what I'm going to do actually, I don't need that just yet. I'm going to take apart this phone, this iPhone 7, and um, so we can pop out the logic board and get to get to the chip. That's what we're trying to do. We've got the logic board out. Now what we can actually see is it's actually Schmick. Like there's no previous work on this one before, which is good. We don't, the worst kind of repairs is fixing um, other technician failure. So I'll chuck you guys microscope and webcam. So the audio chip is actually under this bit just here. I'll just try and take this off as clean as possible. Always got to leave a little bit behind. So, what I was showing before, I'll just refresh you guys. If we go back to this part here where we've got these three resistors, what we're trying to do is connect that second resistor along back to that pad. Um, so, we're looking for that first one, and then there's a second one after that. Back to here. That's that dude just there. Let's get a better angle on that one. It's a bit hard for me to show you guys. Hang on, I'm going to get it steady in a sec. So we've got the big capacitor on the left. Then we've got three resistors. That middle resistor is the one we're going for. But to do that, we've got this guy in the way, but we're not going to worry about moving him. It's this chip that we want to move up. Oh, come on, get focused. All right, that's good. Um, I need my board holder. Where is my board holder? I should have prepped it beforehand. Where did I put my board holder? There it is. Ah. So we chuck the logic board in our clamp imager. I'm going to remove the chip going on this angle. Now 
now. That looks good for you guys. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I only use about 70, 75 litres of air. At about 175. Now the plan... The reason why I angle the board this way is to grab the chip like this. There's not much room or clearance. But... If I grab it like this, I can hold on to it once it gets hot. So... Let's put down a tiny bit of flux. Um, grab a couple of coins here. This is just to absorb the heat. So I'm not getting other bits hot that I don't want hot. And we'll grab our heat gun. So there's nothing actually wrong with the audio chip. All we need to do is lift it up so we can run that wire between that resistor and the chip. I'll just lightly tap the chip to see when it will budge because then we know she's ready to come up. And the goal is to lift it up without knocking anything else around it. Because that just makes our job way harder. Come on. So I need a bit more flux. I'm going to put it up to 380. I don't know why. It should have, um, or not that I don't know why, but I would expect it to let go by this point. There we go. So, once I've done that, I move that out of the way. I grab that. And then I give it a bit of a blast. And now I'm ready. To pick it up. The only thing that went kind of funny then, and it was my fault, when I knocked it the first time, I knocked a bit of this solder out. So... If I'm not careful, that will bridge the connection of those resistors, which we don't want. But, that's fine. It's not the world's biggest problem. I picked it up. I picked it up cleanly. Like, nothing there's knocked around. Maybe that dude was a little bit moved, but, no, she was a good, good pickup. I'm happy with that pickup. It could be a lot worse, especially where, while you're recording something. I could really stuff it up catastrophically. And then... I look like a tool! Now all I'm doing is using a chisel tip, chisel tip iron to pick up the lead-free solder because I want to use leaded the manufacturers don't like using leaded solder but it works a hell of a lot better and rather than putting my hand in an awkward position I'm just using my left hand to rotate 
the board, the clamping McJigger holding out the board, so I can just keep my right hand on the same angle and not cause any problems of myself. But I'm pretty happy with how this is all looking, including that little bridge that I had going on there. I, the iron picked that up straight away. put down a little bit more a little bit more flux now I'm gonna add some of my own solder to the mix And that's just so when I reball the chip, it mixes with the solder on this board really easy. Not only that, the leaded solder just melts that little bit quicker than the manufacturer's one, which means we're producing le producing, which means we're adding less heat to the board. The less heat, the better, as far as, um, as far as consistently doing it, you don't want to just heat up. Every time you add board, heat to the board, you're essentially, um, you may do something wrong. So the less time you add it, the better. I'm just using a little bit of shellite on the end of a clean room cloth. I don't really use Q-tips like a lot of other guys. I find that leaves cotton everywhere. Where this way, it's so clean. Every time. Look how clean that looks, mate. We love it. We absolutely love it. Okay, next I need some solder paste. With some solder paste, we can move that one out the way. We'll put the chip underneath the scope here. This repair brought to you by... Re no, I'm not. Lol jokes. No sponsor. This repair brought to you by me. Um, what I'm grabbing here is my stencil to re-ball that chip. Because you can see that there's some, some of those pads on that chip have solder and other ones don't, so I can't reuse it, it needs to all be even. So I've got the right stencil. We then want to add a little bit of flux and grab my iron, hold this one still, and just clean up. Remove all that solder. Just that blob, just there. Clean it up. And I'm just cleaning up that flux because it's really sticky. And it will make the solder flow differently. So we don't want to leave any of that on there before we put our stencil over it and our new solder paste to then make some really nice balls. Yes, we're going to make some really nice balls.
I'm trying to get that in best focus for you guys. There we go. <gasps> So, we've got our solder paste. I'll just chuck a bit some here on the mat. I then use a little spatula or spudger. Collect up some of it. And then I find the, sten the appropriate stencil. So then, we can cake it in. Once that's all caked in, wipe away the excess. I then grab my tweezers to hold it down. And the hot air gun. Let's see if I can get this the first time. You want to add uniform heat to it because if you do it all at once, the flux inside the paste will bubble up too much and it will kick the paste out. Like it almost did then. Patience, patience. You can't rush perfection. Lovely. Look at that. First go on camera again. What's going on? This is my repair day. Next up, we just want to kick out that chip from our stencil. I'll just put a bit of a bend in it and poke it out. Drop some flux on top of the chip. And what we're going to do is just blast it with some heat again to make those balls nice and even. That one done. Another clean room cloth. You make the mistake so many times in this, like not thinking what you're doing, wiping up some of that solder paste with a cloth and then wiping it on other things. And you don't want to do that. You end up with solder paste everywhere. It is not fun. And that is our prepped audio IC chip. So we've got that prepped, we've cleaned up the board. Next, we've got to run a jumper. Jumper, all I mean is run a connection. So now, we just need to connect that part there to there. And the way we do that is with a bit of wire, conformal coating, and UV lamp or torch, whatever you want to call it. So for these, I use, this is 0.02 millimeter diameter wire. You guys probably won't even be able to see it. Not at all. It's like thinner than, no, it feels like human hair, really. Maybe I should Google it. How thin is a human hair? Let's do it. How thin is human hair? What's 70 microns? 
70 microns to millimeter. Ha! Huh, it's thinner than a human hair. A human hair is 0.07 millimeters across. So this is 20 microns across. Science! Anyway. I always see this the same way. I put... I'll fix up my scope so you guys can see. I put a bit of the wire down. I then touch it with a bit of flux. I then grab my iron. And a bit of solder. And I just tin up that wire. Once that's tinned up, you can see where that goes from silver to that copper color. That's where I trim it. So I know where that end is. I then take a much smaller head of my iron. Now this is where the skill comes in. This is the hardest bit of the whole repair, in my opinion. We chuck a bit of, just a tiny bit of flux down. Again, we find the end of this wire. Having Red Bulls doesn't help you doing with this, doesn't help you doing with this job. Having Red Bulls doesn't help this job at all. My tweezers literally just decide to cut that end off, so I've got to remove that. Get out of here. And all I'm doing is using my tweezers and my finger to put that wire into place. It's just such a finicky part of the repair. Excuse me while I concentrate for a second, guys. Red Bull definitely doesn't help this job at all. That's now connected. But here comes the tricky part, putting it in position of that other pad and trimming it 
without knocking it off. Excuse my shaky hands, guys. I'm not normally this shaky. Or I can be. Red Bull induced. And that's our little wire down. So now, very carefully, we take a clean room cloth and we just dab. And all I'm doing there is getting rid of the excess flux. Now, we're going to take a little bit of this conformal coating. And my UV lamp, which isn't long enough. Um... Oh, I can use this USB plug here. I'll just put a tiny bit on the end of these tweezers. And I touch. I'm just trying to make sure it just stays on the resistor end and not covering this chip at all. Oh, I'm being a little bit particular. Generally in this job, when you try and be too particular, you end up stuffing things up. And all I'm doing there is curing it with a little bit of UV. I'm l not looking at it directly though because I don't have my damn safety glasses ready. Just like at the dentist. The reason why I do that is because when you put down the chip and heat it up, um, if you don't have conformal coating up, that wire is going to go flying. It's either going to get absorbed into the chip or just end up somewhere else on the board and you don't want that to happen. With that one done, we just want... Look at that. She's good, mate. So if we go back to our diagram... We've now connected this resistor. Oh, this resistor just here to that pad just there. Um, and by doing so, we've hopefully fixed our audio IC issue. I always chuck a bit of flux down. And you want it to be even. So I chuck it down like that. Get the chip out of the way so she doesn't go flying. And I blast it with a bit of heat. And that way we get that flux nice and even all over those pads. Now we just have to line up. Oh. All 
Come on, get even. All those balls with all those pads and position the chip in the right direction because every one of those pads do something slightly different. So if we have a look on an angle, can you guys see that mark on the corner of the chip? That's got to be in this corner here. Pop that one down. That doesn't look exactly in place for me, so. That looks a bit better. Just a little bit more this way. And a little bit this way. Oh, almost had it. That's primo positioning, mate. Now, I do the heat gun. I put chips on a little bit different than everyone else. They kind of like, everyone else that I watch do this, they hold the chip down with tweezers, but I don't like the idea of shaking. So, I always do the same thing. I just add a bit of heat, but I slowly turn up the airflow. I gotta watch it at the same time. See, I don't have to hold it. There's no way I can knock it. You guys might, if we get close enough, you'll see the chip like slide into place once it melts. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm actually slightly off here. Whoops. Whoopsie. I thought that would be it down. We're just going to see how we go, I reckon. I don't want to stuff with that too much. So what we're looking for is it just to shift in place once everything's melted. Like that. Is it going to do it on the other side though? That's what we're looking for. I'm a little bit sceptical whether I did that right or not then. I think it was too off-center. Before I got real confident with it, I used to put markers in the EMI shield here. Like, I'd mark it up. But that looks good. We'll see what happens. Clean room cloth and a bit of a wipe again.
let's pop it all back together. Get this out of the way. Just a webby. Point it at my hands, and all we're doing is popping the logic board down. Now, the moment of truth with all that. Oh, come on, don't do that. With all this back together. Step number one is seeing if it boots. That's a good sign. We're just going to wait for this to start up. A nice quick boot is always a good indication that I've done everything correct rather than it hanging on the Apple logo for minutes on end. And we're just going to go over to voice memos. And we've got a voice memo recording. That's what we like to see all in a day's work, mate. Um, that's a whole iPhone 7 audio IC repair. I've tried to make a couple of these YouTube videos, or long, I should just call them long form content rather than just the TikToks I've been making. Um, if you guys are from TikTok, I appreciate you subscribing in um, waiting for me to do one of these is what I should say. And um, if you just come across this, I hope it helps. Feel free to do all that YouTube stuff, drop a comment, like with your friends, subscribe of course, and I'll see you guys on the next repair. Thanks so much.